I want you to take a look now at the president's latest tweet, and this is about Turkey. Here it is. I've just authorized a doubling of tariffs on steel and aluminum with respect to Turkey as their currency, the Turkish lira, slides rapidly downward against our very strong dollar. Aluminum will now be 20 percent, steel 50 percent. Our relations with Turkey are not good at this time. Market watcher David Barnson is with us. Now, the president is applying the screws to Turkey economically. It's working. Turkey's currency is in free fall, and it really is hurting our markets. What do you say about that? Well, that's sort of what happens, Stuart, when you use economics as a weapon. The, the weaponization of economics has a lot of collateral damage that goes with it. Um, ultimately, Turkey does not represent a systemic threat. Uh, it's very minimal bank exposure, virtually non-existent in the U.S., uh, I think this is barely even in the top 10 so far of currency drops the lira's had relative to the dollar. So it, it's a it's, uh, strategy of the president's. It will play itself out, but it is certainly not a very big macro story do, do, for U.S. investors. I mean, it, I mean if Turkey, Turkey cannot, with its currency of free fall, it's finding it very difficult to pay those debts that it owes to Spain and Italy in particular because it's got to pay them in dollars. And he can't afford to buy those dollars. That implies systemic risk to Europe, doesn't it? And that's why it's washing over here. Well, one of the things I was very uh, surprised about, I read this morning a significant report on the European bank exposure. And there is some, and it is a mm. factor. Um, you know, these debts never really get paid, by the way, Stuart. They constantly just roll over. And the ability to redenominate debts in another currency happens frequently. That's not going to be in the bank interest. But it is not the premier banks. This is not Barclays and Deutsche Bank that have this exposure. BNP is a significant European bank, but it's a lot lower tier banks. So I just sort of suspect this story is going to end up going away after a few days. Ah, the voice of reason from David Barnson there, settling us all down. Well done, David. The market's still down, 228 yes. points, however. Okay. I've got what I think is a positive trade headline for you, David. China is not going to impose tariffs on oil that they buy from America. I think that's a positive, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, hu it's a huge positive, but it's an even bigger positive for what I think it indicates. And the president of our country is holding the card now. We have the ability... To, to narrow this trade deficit he so desperately wants narrowed with a massive increase of exporting oil and natural gas to China. There is no lower hanging fruit than that. They need it. It isn't economic cosmetics. It would give a great political victory to the president. That's the best way. You're only going to lower that trade deficit one of three ways. The way I'm suggesting, or by more tariffs, which is more taxes, which is the worst way to do it, or from a recession. We obviously don't want that. If you export energy to China, you will absolutely create growth industry in the United States and you will narrow that trade deficit, which the president has stated over and over he wants to happen. That's fascinating stuff. David, thank you very much for joining us, sir. We do appreciate it always. Thank you, David. Thank you.